Today, we are continuing with our Zero to Hero Mythic Plus Challenge. In this challenge, we are taking a Retribution Paladin from no Mythic rating to a Keystone Hero. What is going on, everybody? Soliday Holiday here, and we are back with our fourth episode of this challenge. If you have not watched prior episodes, the rules for this challenge are pretty simple. I will not be trading any gold or anything else from other characters. I removed this character from my Raider IO profile, so that way no one can see my mains rating. And I will not have any help from friends or guildmates or anything like that. Last episode, we dealt with a little Raider IO issue, and thankfully we logged in for the weekly reset and the problem was fixed and we were able to continue the challenge like normal. So for the start of this episode, we are sitting at an eye level of 458 and a mythic rating of 1011. So first things first, we went and opened our weekly vault. We were graced with a nightmare eggshell trinket, which was a 476 item level. We also had the option to take a great belt of disruption with an item level of 470. The easy choice for this week was the 476 trinket, and that took us to an item level of 460. For this week, we are going to have the affixes of tyrannical, storming, and raging. Also, I have a little bit of a challenge for you guys this episode. Whoever can guess the right amount of tornadoes I get hit by, I, I don't know, I'll, I'll give you a cookie because it, it's, a, it's a lot. It's a good, it's double digits easy. Moving on, this week we didn't get anything from the world boss. We also didn't get anything of note from the Dream Seed, Super Bloom Cash, Aiding the Record, or the Dream Warden. After this, we got straight into some Mythic Pluses, and boy, do we do a whole lot of dungeons for this episode. Our first dungeon we got into was a plus 15 Everbloom, and it, honestly, this group was really good, but us being the awesome paladin we are, we sat on top of the damage meters for most of the dungeon. In the first couple pulls, I'm pretty sure that I got hit by absolutely every single tornado that was spawned, so I was honestly flopping around like a fish. But other than some awesome DPS on our part, it was a smooth run up until the first boss. After we cleared the trash around Witherbark, the tank tried to pull Witherbark and the adds into the boss area, so that way we could DPS down the adds at the same time as we were fighting Witherbark. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure the devs fixed this, so that way you can't do this anymore. And if anybody knows, leave a comment down below and let me know. I, I, I think that I could be right, but I could also be wrong about that. So what ended up happening was half the group was stuck inside the boss area with the boss, right? And the tank and the other half of the group was stuck with the adds. And so us special ones that were in the boss area died pretty quickly. But after a quick reset, we were able to go back to fighting Witherbark. And honestly, on the Witherbark fight, we didn't really do the mechanics correctly. And a whole lot of the roots were well away from the boss. So a lot of globules actually made it to the boss, but thankfully we were able to kill Witherbark. We then killed the Ancient Protectors easily and moved on to the trash before the Archmage. And I know for a fact that I've said it before, but the Archmage soul boss and the trash leading up to it is probably my least favorite fight of the season. On the trash leading up to the Wither Bark, I did, I ended up getting hit by the Ice Circle and almost died. But after that, we moved on to the Archmage fight. And I'll tell you what, as I was really focusing here, I was really trying to make sure that I did the mechanics correctly and I didn't mess up. And for the fight, we did a pretty good job of dodging all the mechanics. But one of the times the Archmage did cast the ability for the Ice Circles. I did dodge it and I moved away, but sadly I still got pulled by the mechanic. I don't know what ability specifically pulls you, but that ability did pull me into the Ice Circle and I, I got hit by the ice. But other than one of the mages dying and getting battle res, we were able to kill the boss and move on. If you have watched my previous episodes, then I'm sure that you guys can see that my UI has like completely changed, right? I wish I could tell you I spent a whole lot of time customizing and try to make it look really clean, but honestly, that would be a little bit of a lie. What I did do is I copied what Dillison did. I know I gave Dillison a shout out before, but if you have not watched his videos, I highly recommend them. He makes some awesome videos and they're very entertaining. But Dillison has a video that shows you how to set up this UI step by step. And if you like the way it looks and you want to emulate it, I will leave a link for that video down in the description of this video. One of the cool things that the setup and the add-ons allow me to do is it allows me to see the group's interrupts and their big abilities next to their name. So that way I can kind of keep track of what's going on with the group and I know if I need to interrupt or if someone else has an interrupt or anything like that. Also at times in this video you might see some errors pop up. Right now I don't know what this is and I don't really know what's causing this but it happened a lot and it was super annoying. But I really just wanted to play the game right and I also wanted to get a video out to you guys so I kind of ignored it for this video. But what's weird is that it's only happening on my Zandalarian troll. It's not happening on any of my other characters. So I don't know if it's a paladin issue or if it's a Zandalarian troll issue, but I will try to figure out for future episodes. As we were fighting the last boss of Everbloom, he actually got down to 9% when he began to cast his Genesis ability and the petals began to form on the ground. The tank then went to clear the petals and he accidentally walked straight off the cliff and died. So the rest of us just tried to DPS down the boss as fast as we could. 
As it became a little bit more clear that we weren't going to kill the boss in time, I tried to start clearing the petals. Then all the ads spawned from the uncleared petals and the boss and the ads all aggroed onto one of the mages, but thankfully we were able to kill the boss and clear the dungeon. After completing the dungeon, it added 71 to our mythic rating, which put us at 1,082 mythic rating overall. So then we continued on to the next dungeon, which was a plus 14 Atal Dazar. The first boss, Razan, went down like the giant chicken he is, and we continued on through the trash. On the trash leading up to Volcal, Volcal, I don't really know how to say it, but we'll just say Volcal, I got hit by Tornado and landed directly into one of the hex circles, so I became my own little chicken for a moment. But then we continued on to Volcal. Especially in a pug environment, this fight can be a little rough. While killing the totems, I saw one of the other DPS was falling behind, so I backed off on my DPS a little bit, right? I think I pulled back on my DPS just a little bit too much because then my totem was the last one left and I didn't get it killed in time. Thankfully after this, the totems reset and we were able to kill the totems at the same time and continue on with the fight. And I'll tell you what, this fight is so much easier as a melee DPS. All you have to do is walk while you're doing your rotation. On my main, I have to cast ability and then take a step, cast ability, take a step and repeat on and on for the entire fight. So I had so much more fun on this fight than I've had in a while. As we moved on, there was nothing of really note on the dungeon except for us pumping some huge numbers in the trash before the pre priestess. I think that we got up to 400,000 DPS during that fight. The priestess fight went pretty smoothly other than one time we didn't kill one of the adds fast enough and he actually got to one of the pools that help, helps you through transfusion. So what I did is I let everybody else grab a pool and I popped my bubble to pre prevent the damage from transfusion. After killing the priestess, we continued to Yasma. And honestly, just the same as the Volcal fight, this fight is so much easier as a melee DPS. As long as you have a good tank that rotates Yasma appropriately as a melee DPS, all you have to do is follow and do your rotation. It was awesome. I had so much fun. The only thing that you really have to worry about is you really have to pay attention to when the solo ability starts so that way you can get away from the boss. Towards the end of the Yasma fight, both of the other DPS ended up actually dying. And I went to battle res them, but because of my new UI, right, I forgot to put my battle res ability on my bars. So while I was trying to dodge spiders, I had to go into my spellbook and throw my ability on my bar. I was then able to battle res the other DPS and we were thankfully able to kill the final boss, but I felt like kind of a big dummy, right? Because one of the main reasons to bring a paladin, right? Is the battle res and the other utility and I wasn't even using that for this dungeon. So completing this dungeon actually added 197 to our rating, which put us at 1279 rating overall. We then got into a group for a plus 15 fall. And let me just start off by saying this dungeon was, it was just wowzers. I don't even know how to explain it other than that. It was a rough one. So to start out, before we even got into the dungeon, last episode, I actually bought 20 feasts from the auction house. I did this because, you know, I want to help the group and also who doesn't like seeing bigger numbers, right? But all that being said, me being the classic derp that I am, I bought the Hoarding of Draconic Delicacies. If you've never seen this one before, there's a good reason for it. The freaking feast is one of the ones that you have to pitch in all the other food that you can get to get the buff. So you truly hate to see it, right? I highly recommend that you don't buy this one unless like everybody in your group knows. And thankfully you guys don't have to make the same mistakes that I did and you can just learn from my derpiness. So onto the actual dungeon. When we started the dungeon, the tank was doing some very small pulls. And I remember thinking, ah, oh, this is a little weird. But hey, if the tank wants to make small pulls, the tank makes small pulls, right? That's just the pugging environment. You have to follow what the tank does. That being said, we got to the first boss and it became pretty apparent what was going on. So while fighting the first boss, we actually ended up wiping due to no one soaking the jump mechanic. I honestly wasn't too worried about the first wipe because, you know, mistakes happen. It's not that big of a deal. But as we were running back, the group started talking about the fight and I realized that they didn't know the mechanics. At this point, it would have been super easy to leave, right? But I wanted to try to stay and stick it through and see if we could complete the dungeon. So I just tried to tank the soaks so that way we could move on to the next part of the dungeon, right? But we had a couple people that were pulling the circles super far away and I wasn't able to get to them in time. So we ended up wiping again. I will say is that I don't really have an issue if we don't time the dungeon. Don't get me wrong, I want to three chest every dungeon that I'm a part of, but I, as long as we complete the dungeon, I'm happy. So I explained the mechanics and I went through everything and we tried again and we wiped again. So I didn't know this at the time and I will learn this later, but with my new UI, my battle res looks like it's always on cooldown. What's happening here is that it's just on cooldown until I get another one. So it's just counting down until I get my second one, right? And I could have used my battle res to try to complete this fight, 
But I learned this later and I actually use it later to how it's supposed to be used. And good gosh, I think at this point, my derpiness counter for this video is at like five or six. So we tried again and I messed up because I saw another person run into the soak area. So I backed off of it, but the other person did the exact same thing and we ended up wiping because none of us actually soaked the mechanic. At this point, I kind of resigned myself to the fact that we were not timing this dungeon, but the group was pretty cool and I was willing to continue as long as we kept trying to move along. With another wipe under our belt, we finally freaking did it. We finally killed the first boss. So we moved on from the first boss with 27 deaths and 12 minutes left to time the dungeon. I'm not gonna bore you with the details from the second boss, but we ended up wiping three times before we managed to kill it. Then we made it to the third boss. And honestly, at this point, it was proven that no one knew the mechanics of the dungeon, right? And instead of trying to figure out the mechanics, the tank just full sent it as soon as the boss spawned and immediately attacked it. And can you guess what happened? Yep, absolutely. You in the back, you are right, we wiped. So after the wipe, instead of waiting before we pull the boss again, the tank just sent it again without asking anything or the mechanics or anything. So at this point, after that second wipe, I called it. I couldn't do it anymore. We were sitting at 54 deaths for the dungeon and we've been in there for over an hour. So I just had to call it quits and the key ended up being depleted. All this being said, one of the reasons why I'm doing these videos is one, because I'm having a great time and I, I appreciate everybody's support and everything like that, right? But also I wanna show how much fun pushing Mythic plus keys is and I hope a lot more people start participating and having a good time with it. But help your fellow people out, help your group out, right? I would much rather spend five minutes waiting before we start the dungeon if you're unsure of the fights and mechanics and that kind of stuff. There are videos that pretty much explain the mechanics to a T that you can watch in under five minutes. After this dungeon, I applied for group after group after group and was unable to get into anything. I think I applied for dungeons for close to 30 minutes with no luck. So we made our own group with our plus 15 dark heart thicket key. While we were waiting for people to join our group, I upgraded some of our gear. I upgraded our feet to 450, our wrists to 450, our shoulders to 457, and our helmet to 467. That put us at an item level of 461 overall. So once we got in, everybody into our group, we started the dungeon. And after this last group, this group was an easy group and it went by extremely smoothly. The first couple bosses went down with no problem and we only had one stupid death from me on Oakheart. After Oakheart, I threw my final reckoning into the trees on the ceiling like the pro gamer I am. To pour salt in the wound, I got hit by a tornado and I got deleted by a big swirly pool of death from the Blood Fury. We were then able to kill the final boss and still had 3% left of enemy forces. So we poured it out and poured it back in. Once we killed the final mobs, we ended up adding 80 to our mythic score and that put us at a 1359 overall. So we did end up getting a 463 trinket from the chest at the end of the dungeon. But sadly, it's the exact same trinket we got from our vault so we couldn't equip it. From the chest, we also got a plus 17 fall. I then went to Valdraken really quick and I upgraded our helmet to 470. We then got a group together for our plus 17 fall. On the first poll, I was super excited and I actually got to pump some pretty good numbers, but the unholy death knight decided to absolutely freaking break the game and was topping out at 700 some K DPS, which was freaking insane. We then went through the first boss and killed it with no issue. And I don't want to dog the last group that I went through the fall with. Everyone is new to the game at some point. I'm good with learning and trying to teach the mechanics. I don't care if you're new to the game and you're trying to learn, I want to help promote positivity and helpfulness in the game. But it was super nice to play with people that knew, right? And we could do the mechanics with zero issues and continue on. So we were then able to move on to manifested time waves. So if anybody can help your boy out. As a melee DPS, I always feel like I'm horribly positioning myself in this fight. Do you guys know of a better way to position yourself so that way when you move it doesn't feel so awkward? I don't know, maybe I can start trying to run the other way, which would make it a little bit better. One of the cool things about this challenge and making these videos is that I do feel like I'm getting a lot of knowledge and growing as a player. I feel like I've been consistently getting better at WoW throughout this season, and this challenge has helped me grow exponentially, honestly. So as we were fighting the boss, I did end up actually getting chrono faded on me. So I then ran to the fast portion of the fight, so that way I could get dispelled. And I thought I did get dispelled, but it was the other person. So I then went back to the slow area, and I got dispelled when I was there, which almost caused a wipe. Thankfully, we were able to kill the manifested time waves and we were able to move on. We tried to do the dragon skip, but we failed miserably. I and another person just died and we actually ended up just rezzing into the new area. As we were heading to the last boss, we shrouded the last group of ads and I think this is such a cool ability that was added to the game. 
I never really see a lot of rogues, but this is always really cool when I see it and we get to use it. On the last boss, I ended up getting absolutely demolished by some earth spikes, but we finished the dungeon and we were able to gain 231 to our mythic rating, which put us at a 1590 rating overall. So this dungeon was the last dungeon we needed for our weekly event of completing mythic dungeons. So I opened up the cache and I got a pair of lava forged soilerettes or whatever, however you say them. These had an item level of 470 and were 20 item level upgrade for what we currently had. This put us at an overall item level of 463. We then got into a plus 15 Waycrest Manor, and I don't know if this is just me, but like, is anybody experiencing some extremely long load times in WoW? I feel like the load times for going into areas has significantly increased lately. But moving on to the actual dungeon, on one pull the tank didn't get full aggro on all the mobs before I started attacking, so I ended up actually dying. The Witch Sisters then went down super easily. In the courtyard, the healer ended up getting fully deleted by something, and I, I don't really know what it was, but I also ended up dying to a ground ability. To me, I thought I was most definitely far enough away from this ability, but obviously I wasn't, and I need to remember to put more distance in the future. We moved on to Goliath, and I don't know why I never used Blessing of Protection on Soulthorns. For whatever reason, I cannot freaking remember to do it. But we ended up wiping, and I decided to use my bubble ability after everyone had already died, so I stayed alive for another whopping 4 seconds. At this point, the derp counter for this video is in double digits, right? So I'm sorry that you guys are having to see all this horribleness. But we were able to kill the goliath on the second pull. Once we got down into the basement, the tank did some really weird positioning for the soul charmers. He positioned everybody at the top of the stairs, which made it nearly impossible to see what was going on. But we finished the pull. And we were able to kill the last boss, finishing the dungeon, which added 61 to our mythic rating, which put us at 1651 overall. We then delved into a plus 15 black rock hold. This was an awesome group and everyone had good numbers and it felt super smooth. And I will say, as I remember thinking in this dungeon, at this point, I've been having so much fun playing my paladin. At some points, I, I even forgot that I was trying to record for this video, right? And I just kept playing and having a good time. Normally, I try to take notes at the end of dungeons for recording so it makes it a little bit easier, but I completely forgot for all these dungeons. And honestly, I'm having a little bit more fun and I'm a, and I'm a little bit more invested in my paladin than I am my main. And I don't know, I might have to sit down and consider switching mains at one point. And I also feel like I'm doing more and better consistent damage with my Paladin than I am my Warlock. And honestly, my Paladin has a lower item level than my Warlock. So I don't know if that's just because Paladins are OP right now or what. But back to the dungeon, we continued with the dungeon and honestly had no deaths or no major issues. We killed the first two bosses with no deaths and continued on to the third boss. On the third boss, we had Hateful Gaze put on us twice in a row, and we actually ended up dying on the second Hateful Gaze. I had Divine Shield up, so I could have used that, but I kind of panicked at the time. We honestly then finished the dungeon like it was nothing, and we also had some pretty good freaking DPS overall if I say so myself. After completing the dungeon, 149 was added to our Mythic score, which put us at 1800 overall. The tank got a trinket from the chest, and because he's a certified good guy and he didn't need it, he traded it to us. So we ended up getting the Ember of Nullification, which had a 463 item level, which replaced our 450 trinket we had. This trinket also had both strength and versatility, which was awesome. It didn't increase our item level, but it was still a huge upgrade. The next dungeon we got into was a plus 15 rise. The first pull was a little bit of a rough one for us. At this point, I think I'd been running Mythic Pluses for a little bit too long, right? And I wasn't exactly playing at my best. We were getting hit by abilities and other things that I knew better and I should have been able to ignore or dodge. We almost died on the first pull, but I was able to shield and stay alive and thankfully our healer was really good for this dungeon and he kept me from dying for pretty much all of the dungeon. As we were going through tier, he was on 4% when he summoned his orbs again. I used my bubble to try to run through the damage area to collect all the orbs so no one else had to, but as I was leaving the damage area, I got pushed back by tier into the gold area and I actually ended up dying. Also when Tyr summoned his orbs, we also pulled adds that were still on the platform that we hadn't killed yet. And we end up wiping with Tyr on freaking 0%. We then ran it back and killed Tyr in almost record time. We then made it to the tank fight. And on the first artillery, I decided I was going to stay in the same spot and pop my bubble, right? And I mean, it worked, but I came to regret that the next time the tank used the artillery ability because whoever had it on them I got into the perfect position where it destroyed absolutely everything that I believed in. After I died, I wasn't getting battle rest, so I just released and tried to head back. I was able to get there before the final boss of the fight, and we were able to kill it and move on. Morchi died easily with just a mage dying from familiar faces. 
on the final boss, the boss was on 0%, and I ended up dying to the infinite corruption at the same time as the boss died. We timed this dungeon and it added 36 to our mythic rating, which put us at a whopping 1836 overall. I then ran to Valdraken in really quickly and I upgraded our helmet to 476. And this is going to be the end of our episode for this week. I know the video is coming out a little later than I would have liked, but you know, real life responsibilities and such take precedence. At the end of this week, we are sitting at a mythic rating of 1836 and an overall item level of 464. We completed a lot of 15 and up dungeons for this week and for our weekly vault, we're gonna have two options of 476 gear. So thank you everyone that is still here watching these videos and I appreciate all of your feedback and support and I appreciate every single one of you.